In the previous video I have demonstrated the weak points in the design of my CNC version 0.6. Now I would like to show how to improve the design. In a hardware store I have purchased 8 tiny wheels with a diameter of 30mm. Those wheels replaced the home built plastic discs by what the construction becomes less wobbly. The second weak point are the thin 3mm threaded rods that can be bent easily under load. The weakness can be overcome by pre-stressing the steel rods, which is why there are mount points at both ends of the threads now. The pre-stressing is accomplished by two screw terminals. Once more there is, with increasing pre-stress you get higher precision, but also more friction. Because of that higher friction, I was operating the motors with an overvoltage of 8V by pulse width modulation. That was no good idea. The higher current flowing through the windings of the motors was the reason why they ended up in smoke after some hours of operation. Now I am using the stronger geared motors from an old printer. The aluminum angles of the linear guides that bend easily under load are now enforced with small pieces of 19mm stripboard. The vertical axis is now attached closer to the pivot point of the servo lever. That's why the total movement is just 15mm, but as demonstrated in the previous video, this machine can't process material with a thickness of more than 5mm. The advantage is the higher precision along the vertical movement. 10 steps are now equivalent to a movement of less than 1mm. The last thing to be improved is the sensor disc. The discs with a larger diameter have 8 teeth, thus 32 steps equal 1 revolution, by what the resolution of movement is doubled. In theory, we get a linear movement of 0.016mm per step. The advantage of the higher resolution is visible when plotting the diagonal lines of the test pattern. The movement is less waved. Caused by the larger diameter, the construction had to be modified slightly. The plate of the upper table had to be cut out, while the base plate was milled out at the disc position. In total we get a smaller divergence to the reference print, the work and the additional costs pay off. Here I am cutting 1mm plywood. All parts are cut mirror inverted because the cutting edges are usually smoother at the bottom side of the plywood. Nonetheless, all parts have to be smoothened with some sandpaper afterwards. Raw material in and perfect parts out is nothing you get with cheap machines or low quality cutting tools. With some glue and paint, we get another copy of a communicative penguin that is willing to tell us all secrets of his software. In addition, that copying process is no breach of law. You are explicitly allowed to copy the operating system that BERT represents for free. Next I will process 3mm acrylic plastics. As demonstrated in the previous video, the plastics has to be cooled with some water to avoid it from melting while cutting that material with this slow machine. I have built a curb from plywood and sealed it with varnish. The splash guard is made of a perforated metal stripe and some plastics. The chipboard bulges when sprinkled by too much splash water, which is definitely not good for the precision of this machine. The plastics is engraved and cut by a 10 degrees V-bit. 
Not only for this experimental CNC there is. With each new material you'll try to process, there is a high chance of breaking some router bits and causing minor damage to the machine. With each failure you'll get smarter, at least that's how I learned to handle this machine. Many parameters such as feed rate, cutting depth, type of router bit and so on have to be considered. Failures happen, but simply try again until you'll succeed. Working with a CNC router is not as simple as handling an inkjet printer, there is more to be done than pushing a start button. The result isn't perfect, but I like it. You can see that the widths of the lines rise. The deeper the V-bit dives into the plastics, the wider the engraved line. The plastics plate is not that flat and the frame of the CNC is always somehow bent. The more accurate the build, the better the output of the machine. As shown in the previous video, the maximum speed is around 3 to 4 mm per second. A whole day was needed to cut the parts of this demonstration transmission. The shape of the gear wheels wasn't perfectly cut. With a round file I had to rework some of the teeth to make the transmission run smoothly. Not included in the production time are the failures. The router bit I used in the first attempt was worn out after cutting aluminum in the previous video. The edges of the left gear wheel are very rough, caused by the bad cutting tool. Even with this cheap machine you get better results when using quality router bits. As demonstrated in the previous video, this machine can engrave glass with ease. That's still true after the modifications. I was asked if this machine can mill circuit boards. In principle, this machine can be used for this technique. The feed rate is rather slow as demonstrated multiple times. The track shown here is 2mm wide. The diameter of the soldering points is also 2mm. If the V-bit doesn't dive too deep into the board, a thin copper ring is formed on the surface. Because of the fact that neither the board nor the machine is that flat, the width of the groove rise. The copper of some soldering points is teared off, by what the result is useless. At least you can use this machine to decorate a copper plated board, nothing more yet. Finally I'd like to risk another router bit to cut 1mm aluminum. The feed rate is set to a very slow value to keep the side load as low as possible. The machine speed can be raised when using sharp, high quality router bits that have a lower side load in general. The CNC needs 20 minutes to cut this 6cm disc. The result isn't too bad considering the low quality bit and the low power machine. But just have a look at the rough cutting edge before considering to process solid aluminum with this CNC. Start your own experiments with different materials and cutting tools and tell me your results, but don't expect too much from this machine. I am using my machine for processing thin plywood, glass, debron and plastics. Version 0.6.1 is not the end of machine evolution, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.